Hello everyone, welcome back for more. Let's play Bester's Quest. So let's continue, shall we? Now that our mysterious clue box has two full spaces in it, even though we saw the UFO beaming up the people right at the beginning. Yeah. Not really sure what was going on there, but anyway. Well, what was going on? I know what was going on with the people being beamed up, I'm just not sure what was going on with the developers when they decided they needed to show us that. So anyway, new item get. Missiles. And just so I can show these off. Fun things, aren't they? Basically, you wait until something comes on screen, target, and then those missiles fly around and blow up a whole lot of stuff. Fun for everyone, but pretty useless in the overworld here. So let's replenish the supply. And head towards the next boss and labyrinth and everything else. A good placement for a hot dog stand, I guess. Oh wait, no it's not. That's a terrible place for a hot dog stand. At least in this game. Mostly because they don't flood the section after it with enemies. And you don't run into too many enemies on the way there from the last boss. You really don't. But, it is the only hot dog stand between the last boss and this boss. So I guess that's something. Now this next boss... ...isn't difficult. But it is tedious. You'll see what I mean when I start to find it here. Oh, didn't get quite far enough back. And no, I'm not afraid of using a potion when fighting this guy. You just gotta wait till he charges up his sword, drop back into the right a little bit. To the right a little bit. Blah. And you will wear him down a couple of hits at a time because that shield is basically going to make sure you never land a hit on him until he, moves his, until he moves it out of the way. Which makes me wonder why he has to move it out of the way at all. I mean, that is a one-handed sword. These are the things I think about. When I'm, you know, almost ignoring the fact that he's charging up his sword so it's time for me to move. But yeah, you'll know you're far enough to the right when your middle stream is hitting him in the shield. With this gun, anyway. And you just know you have to drop back just a little bit. Not far. Probably a little farther back than I'm doing is safer. Less room for error that way. I wasted a potion, didn't I? Probably.
No, I did not. I got hit again. Go me. This thing would have killed me, if not for potions. This boss. My skills have seriously taken a turn for the worst with this game. This is like the easiest boss, really. It's just the most tedious one. Because it didn't require that many fast movements, and it doesn't really threaten you. It just kind of stands there and swings a sword at you. Firing off the lightning is a nice touch, but there he goes. He is dead now. But he would have killed me. Man. Okay, yes. Short video. No, I'm not going to replenish my potions between this boss and the next. Because more than likely the next boss is going to kill me badly without all five potions. If I'm recalling which one the next boss is. I think it's a little gunner with the shield. Really, really annoying guy. But oh look, there's a clue. More clue, anyway. Yes, UFO. We, we saw that at the beginning of the game game. Yeah. But anyway. Decent stopping spot for me. Another boss down. Uh -huh. So anyway. Take care, folks. When we return, another boss. And if I'm not mistaken, we're getting awfully close to having a full life bar. Could be wrong about that, though. We'll see. I know last video was short, this video will be too! Hopefully. But we've got another boss to deal with, and this one is significantly meaner. However, there is a section in here, in these sewers, which is almost guaranteed to give you a hit if you have any amount of bad luck whatsoever. I'll point it out when we get there. Hopefully, I will not have trouble. Drop down to this hole. But there's a little section with infinitely respawning little metal, you know, the little guys who can eat through the wall. Yeah, there's a little section of that, and if you're... and if you get stuck for any reason there whatsoever, you're going to have to deal with a stream of these things coming through the wall, and you're pretty much guaranteed to take a hit. It's right up here. And only one bothered to show up. I still took a hit anyway. Go me. Which probably means I'm going to use a potion going into that boss battle. And these guys we can just ignore. Because we are out. Yeah, let's go this way. Get in here. Get the missiles ready because, let's face it, we're gonna need missiles for this boss coming up. Pass that one up. I went too far. Here we go. And this boss. Massive pain in the backside boss. Why? We'll show you why. You know how you hurt him? Hit him in the head. You know what can't hit him in the head? your gun very often. That shield he puts up, yeah, it blocks just about every shot you could ever hope to actually fire at him. So you either have to get in his face, use invisi invincibility potions, get straight in his face, and uh, whip away and hope you contact his head. Or, you can sit here and just slowly creep along the floor and dodge those bullets, like I'm doing now, and pump missiles into him. And hope that your missiles, you know, last long, and hope your missiles outlast him. Because this boss is 
Well, a pain. And there he goes. Thankfully, something I forgot and didn't notice until this point is that your if your items do actually replenish at the end of a boss fight. So yeah. So you know what? I'm going to take this video, slap it onto the last one, and call that one video. Seems like a good plan to me. But anyway, since I'm making that last episode a two-boss battle, this video will be a two-boss battle, I'm going to call this video here, and when we come back... We're getting awfully close to actually getting the last item in the game, the noose, and the last life bar in the game, along with the last boss in the game. Well, mini boss. And then we gotta fight a UFO. Go figure. So anyway, take care folks. See you later.